Hello, everyone. If you are just joining us, welcome to the Radical Exchange Annual Conference. Our next session will be Radical Exchange Student Chapters. I'd like to welcome Russell to the virtual stage to begin our session. Hi, uh, I'm Russell. Uh, I'm from the Radical Exchange Rochester chapter, and I'm a PhD student of uh, political science uh, from uh, University of Rochester. And uh, uh, I, uh, I'll just briefly introduce uh, the chapter, uh, the, the panel, uh, the, the other panelists. Um, so Jake is from uh, University of Chicago and uh, he is a founding member of University of Chicago Radical Exchange and he is uh, editor-in-chief of the Chicago Policy Review. Uh, previously, Jake worked in the community development uh, sector as a program associated with uh, Massachusetts Housing Partnerships One Mortgage Program. He helped working class households buy homes in otherwise unaffordable parts of the state prior to that. He helped finance amenities in economically disadvantaged communities as development coordinator for Partners for the Common Book, uh, Good, a DC-based uh, CDFI loan fund. He's published work on comparative borrower uh, outcomes in the One Mortgage Program and FHA Mortgage Program has appeared in the March 2020 edition of the City Space. Uh, and uh, uh, Vinicius is a lawyer and re researcher. Uh, he's from the Radical Exchange Brazil chapter. He holds an LLM in uh, civil law studies at the University of uh, Sao Paulo, uh, FDRP. Uh, selected during undergraduate law studies by the Canadian Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade Development, and for the uh, emerging leaders in the American program to support the development of human capital and the next generation of leaders in Latin America. He's a member of the Radical uh, Market Research Group from FDRP led by, university, uh, by Professor Juliana uh, Domingos, a uh, member of the Commission of Civil Law, uh, OAB, and member of uh, Radical Exchange Brazil chapter. And then we have uh, Asmi. Uh, sh she's a master's student at the Uni University of Sussex, studying uh, sustainable development uh, with uh, the, the Science Policy Research Unit. Her research in development issues had led her to volunteer and work on several grassroots projects, both at home and around the world, related to climate change and gender e equality. During the course of her current studies, she has developed particular interest in infrastructure, digital, social, and physical, uh, their adoption for sustainability goals and how to transform decision-making processes to better reflect the interests of wider society. Currently, she is facilitating research on the impacts of digitalization with social services. And the first part of our panel, uh, I would let everybody just uh, to briefly talk about how do you uh, know about RxC and uh, what is your uh, uh, motivation about RxC. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll actually start uh, with uh, Jake. Can you, can you talk? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so I think my first um, exposure to uh, the radical exchange ideas were probably like a lot of you um, coming into contact with the uh, radical markets book. Um, but um, I mean, these were ideas that were sort of um, also coming to me through uh, the Chicago community in a lot of ways. Um, but the parts of this whole radical exchange thing that really spoke to me a whole lot, um, it was all about um, where I was working in the community development field, um, I was getting involved in some of the EMB uh, activism that's going on, especially in the United States, but I think in other places as well. Um, and what I started to see in those, um, you know, when I would go to the panel, the um, different uh, discussion groups and things like that is a lot of those folks have a very specific policy uh, that they're interested in pursuing. But for me, what was missing from a lot of those discussions was actually the, um, the more ideological element. It, it felt like a policy in search of an ideology. And for me, when uh, Radical Exchange talks about ideas like cost and they talk about self-assessment taxes and different ways um, that we can encourage development um, in an economically um, conscious way um, and also a socially conscious way, I think it sort of brought together um, certain things that I liked from leftist thinking and certain things that I liked from um, neoliberal kind of more right-wing um, ide ideas about the economy. And it sort of synthesized them in a way that I thought was really attractive and that gave a little bit more um, oomph to the ideas that were being discussed. 
So I thought that for me, Radical Exchange just came along right at the correct time. You know, I was getting ready to transition from um, the world of, you know, my community development career before this back to the university to get my MPP at UChicago, UChicago Harris. Um, so it just came along at the right time. And that's why I decided to start um, setting up this chapter. Wow, uh, that's very interesting. And uh, so, and I'll let uh, everybody talk more in detail uh, later. So now, uh, Vinicius, can you uh, briefly introduce how you got to know about Radical Exchange? And uh, so what makes you want to uh, start a, a chapter? Okay, first of all, my name is Vinicius. I'm from Brazil, I'm a lawyer. And I want to thank everybody who is watching us, especially people from Latin America. Everybody is welcome. But I started to know about the Radical Exchange Group because my teacher, my professor, Juliane Domingos, she went to Detroit conference last year and she started to make a chapter, a research chapter here in my university at the University of Sao Paulo. So it was the first uh, uh, introduction to the Radical Exchange Movement because here we have a chapter, a research chapter about the book the Radical Markets by Glyn and Eric, po Eric Posner. So that's the why I started to study and understand better about the all movement. And um, my motivation about this is a uh, special group, especially because the book talks about how to reduce the inequality. Unfortunately, Brazil is so unequal. All Latin America, we have a lot of problems with inequality. So that's took me a lot of attention when I discovered about a book that uh, gives me a new perspective how how can change the situation, especially here. Because, of course, we know the roles and our alternatives to read this, but it's all the same, all the same in the problem remains. So that's the why it took a lot of attention when I discovered about the alternatives. So we started to work group research. It's a group where uh, in two and two weeks we, we studied about the chapters, and that was my beginning. Okay, that's really cool. Uh, and uh, next uh, is Asmi. So, can you also briefly talk about how you uh, get to know about radical exchange ideas and uh, what makes you want to uh, join or start a chapter? I'm Esme, and I study at the University of Sussex. Um, and I'm currently studying for my master's in sustainable development. And my interest in the radical exchange movement and ideology is really stemmed from this experience. Um, so I was introduced to the concepts by my professor, Maria Savona, who's currently doing a lot of research on data democracy, and she thought I'd find it interesting. So um, from my perspective, I'm thinking about the movement mostly in terms of how it relates to climate change and sustainability issues. So. One of the main things I've learned over the years studying sustainable development is the importance of social innovation in tackling climate change issues. And um, while this before perhaps I perceived like technological fixes as being really important, um, I've learned that no matter what kind of amazing technologies exist, there's no way for them to reach their full potential without the right systems of governance and social organization. Um, and it's clear that the systems we have now that may have been serving well in the past, aren't equipped to deal with the problems that we're currently facing. So I think it's really important that we're thinking about and propelling like alternative visions. Um, and this is really where my interest in the movement comes from, um, with its focus on like rethinking and adapting social governance systems to better reflect society's needs today. Okay, that's really cool. And I'll also briefly talk about my uh, experience. Uh, I was like really fortunate like to uh, meet Glenn in an economic conference a few years back, like uh, I think actually way before the publication of the book. And uh, uh, so I remember Glenn has a really interdisciplinary approach uh, to economics and especially to combine uh, more uh, economic ideas uh, with like uh, humanities and law and, and philosophy and really to like very comprehensively th uh, think about the political economy problem, like the big picture problem of uh, the current societies. And like the cutting edge uh, economic research, like uh, nowadays tend to be uh, sort of uh, focused on rather narrow and technical questions. 
uh, uh, rather than to like uh, have a really comprehensive view of like uh, the bigger uh, problem of, of society and the uh, bigger picture. And uh, uh, another thing that also got me interested in radical exchange is like I have been really interested in development of cryptocurrencies and the blockchain. And, uh, and really the, the radical exchange movement is really takes the, this time of uh, diving into this uh, trend of like decentralization uh, of like uh, all kinds of structures. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and also we all know like uh, Vitalik, uh, he is also the leader of, uh, of radical exchange. Um, so, uh, and, 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 and in my university, we have like uh, student groups uh, that's really interesting blockchain and that also helped me uh, sort of organize uh, my chapters. And, uh, and, and for my own sort of uh, uh, research as a PhD student, I think the, I also learned a lot from like the way uh, radical exchange uh, think about like society. Um, and, and another aspect I really like about the radical exchange movement is really to bring together all kinds of people, including academics, uh, like uh, and people in technology and entrepreneurship and government officials and activists and also artists. And to really think about uh, like comprehensively, so uh, how the society should work and, and also work together to uh, find the solutions and, and uh, apply the economic idea, the cutting edge economic research of mechanism design. Uh, and all of that uh, is really cool uh, for me. Um, and now I, I, uh, I would like to talk about uh, sort of the more specific things about how to start a student chapter uh, and uh, uh, like what uh, have you guys experienced uh, when you are trying to uh, start a student chapter. Uh, I, will, um, I will start from myself uh, because I already uh, start, uh, started the uh, University of Rochester chapter. And uh, I think uh, in the beginning, I really need to thank uh, Glenn and uh, uh, Manny and uh, also uh, Jack Henderson. Uh, they helped me in the beginning really to uh, kickstart uh, like the, the chapter. And uh, I, I think uh, especially uh, Jack Henderson uh, sort of uh, uh, come to uh, my campus uh, to give a presentation. Uh, and, uh, and that, uh, and also uh, to help me uh, get uh, like the undergraduate students interested in this. Um, and I, I think the way I did it is like uh, uh, many uh, professors actually either in economics and political science, uh, they already know uh, Glenn's work, uh, and and some of them are like are also like a fan of of, of Glenn's ideas. And if you uh, if if you happen to have faculty like that in your campus, uh, you should just contact them, and and they can also help you to maybe send an email to the whole department to the whole. Uh, like, uh, for example, for the all, the all the econ students or like all the poly science uh, students or all the computer science students uh, in the campus. And, and then you can just get people show up uh, in your event. Um, and also, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, the, Oh, oh, and uh, oh, yeah. I remember. So another important thing is like uh, uh, I sent an email uh, before Glenn's uh, publication of the book Radical Market, and and to the uh, econ professor uh, at University of R Rochester, uh, Stephen Landsberg, and uh, in a couple of months uh, he showed interest in this, and he invited Glenn to uh, our campus to give a, uh, to have like a very well organized event. And that also really helped. So if you can find faculty members uh, in your university that can help organize those kind of events, I think that will be uh, very helpful. Uh, and another thing is like, uh, as I briefly mentioned before, so we have uh, st many students that are really interested in blockchain and there are like blockchain uh, student groups on our campus. And they have like uh, uh, weekly meetings 
and I started to introduce the radical exchange ideas to them and they are also really interested. And so that also really helped us to uh, like kickstart the chapter. Uh, and uh, I mean, as we noticed like the last year's conference uh, also like uh, a lot of, of the community are from the blockchain and this year also. So if you have, uh, if you're interested in blockchain and you can find uh, students on campus that are interested in blockchain, I think that can uh, be really helpful. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think that is what I have to say about the sort of logistics of how to uh, start a chapter. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, oh yeah, also just contact uh, uh, Manny or Jack Henderson or Glenn if you have uh, those interests. So next, uh, I'll move to Vinicius. So Vinicius, can you talk about how in the beginning you started the chapter at Brazil uh, in your university and uh, what, what did you do for like a recruiting? Uh, Vinicius, are you, can you okay. listen? Uh, okay. Can I, okay. So in the beginning it was easier to me because we have a specific research group. So it was a lot of introduction about the main ideas. But I think the, the, the best way is to talk person uh, face face about the, the ideas at uh, the movement and how big is it and how much the people they can get involved about the project. So in the beginning, uh, like I explained before, we had this is group, uh, this is research group. So it was not just uh, people from law, law field, but people from economics and a lot of people. So we start with a small group and it, it starts to rise the number of the, the members and et cetera. But uh, in my uh, own experience, I try to, to speak uh, to a lot of uh, people who is not from academic place, like my friends and uh, people around me in, uh, at work. So I try to explain better the ideas and uh, how, how important is the movement. So I think it's, it's uh, for the beginning, it's better you know about the movement. If you have the idea about the book, of course, it will help a lot. But after uh, it starts start like a group and it starts to, to, to improve. So I think the best idea is to face to face and talk about the, our movement. In the beginning, it could be harder because it's a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, how I can say, uh, different alternatives. But after when we explain, it gets easier and uh, the people uh, get a lot of, uh, more interest about the movement. Okay, uh, that's, that's really cool. And uh, so Jake, uh, do you have uh, something to add about your experience in starting a chapter? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I would definitely echo everything that you said about reaching out to the actual like radical exchange, um, uh, uh, like national organization, you know, Manny is fantastic and extremely uh, supportive. Um, I actually, the, the first um, outreach I had was with Glenn. And I remember this is something I've been thinking about doing like, all, you know, for all year long. And then if I, I was trying like, you know, I, I should just send him an email. I'm a East Chicago student. He has the East Chicago connection. I bet he'll respond to me. So I sent him an email. I think he got back to me within like 15 minutes. So I was just so impressed with how responsive they've been. And I would encourage anyone who's listening and thinking about this, like, yeah, just, just reach out. Um, but so, um, our, our organization is a little bit younger. So we're, like I said, we're just starting, starting up this year. Um, and I think that that really gives us a lot of opportunities to define what a Chicago radical exchange chapter is, you know, I obviously see, you know, this incredible legacy of especially economic thought, but also social thought at the University of Chicago that um, I think that we actually plug into really neatly. So for me, it just made so much sense to have this U Chicago chapter, even though, I mean, I kind of knew, okay, there's already a Chicago chapter, but on the other hand, I also knew that U Chicago kids don't usually like to like leave campus and go, you know, they're usually working on problem sets, so they're too busy to actually go explore Chicago. So I kind of thought there was a really compelling rationale for like a U Chicago radical exchange movement. 
Um, and um, so, so far we've just been trying to recruit. We're in the process of recruiting a um, advisor right now. Uh, so if there's any Chicago professors on the, uh, um, on the conference, you might want to do that. Feel free to send me an email. Um, reach out to uh, Eric Posner, actually, which of course we had to, you know, because he he wrote the book on the thing. Um, and he's, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm like way too busy, which I was expecting, but you know, I, I want to check with him. Um, so yeah, we've just been trying to get a speaker series in place for when we start back up. You know, obviously I think we have to talk about the uh, effect that COVID has had on organizing efforts, um, especially where we just started up this year. It obviously derailed a whole lot of what I had hoped to do for like the remainder of this um, academic year. So we're really looking at next year as like ground zero in terms of our organizing. And hopefully we can really start building some momentum. Yeah, I think the U Chicago really have a great environment. And actually Glenn once uh, worked uh, there as a uh, assistant professor. And actually I remember I was actually visiting U Chicago around the time uh, of the publication of Radical Markets. And actually, because I had uh, my best friend there, uh, he was also doing like a master at uh, Harris and I was visiting him. And I actually, I think I went to uh, Eric Posner's talk. At, uh, I think that's in, uh, in May of 2018, I guess. Yeah, and I, I heard like a lot of people show up uh, in like those related events. And I think you should definitely reach out like also to the econ department and to like, I mean, all kinds of departments, I think, not just like, uh, not just Harris. So yeah, I think you Chicago really should have become like a sort of major chapter. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm glad that you're saying it because when I say it, of course, I'm a Chicago student. So like, yeah, yeah, I would say that. But to hear you say it, yeah, definitely. I, I would love to yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah. I think you there. Chicago should really be leading like the radical exchange <laughs> uh, movement. Thank you. Like, Thank student you. chapters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll um, see. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, okay, so next, uh, ask me. So do you have uh, anything to add about like uh, starting a chapter? Like you have some experience related? Yeah, so um, here at Sussex University, we're still in the kind of very early stages um, and we don't have an official chapter yet. Um, we definitely have a large pool of people who are interested in the radical exchange concepts and um, particularly in SPRU, the science policy research unit where I work. Um, it's a very like interdisciplinary environment and we take a multidisciplinary approach to finding solutions to social inequalities. Um, and there is already work being done with the radical exchange concepts. As I mentioned earlier, some work being done on data democracy, for example. And um, we also have the Pluralist Economic Society um, who aim to open up economics education to incorporate, incorporate more different um, schools of thought. So we've definitely got like a, a large pool of people who could be interested. Um, and I think we're in a strong position for starting a chapter and connecting with the movement further. Um, and right now, COVID's been a bit of an obstruction for like moving things forward. But um, I'm hoping that we can overcome this with a bit more time. Um, and for me, it's just really interesting to hear about everyone else's experiences. Um, and I hope that I can learn from you guys as well to find out um, how, how is best to like move forward and like make the most of what we have here. Okay. Uh, so now uh, we are going to move to the third part of our panel. Uh, we are going to talk about sort of uh, our plans or like what have we done like a very specifically in running the chapter. So what do we do in the chapter meetings? And uh, I will, let's see. So I will start with Vinicius. So can you uh, briefly introduce uh, your uh, Brazil chapter and like what uh, and, and what kind of uh, students or what kind of people uh, show up in the chapter and what, what have you done specifically uh, in like each of the chapter meeting? Uh, Vinicius, you need to turn on yeah. your voice, okay. Yes, uh, first of all, we start to like explain to do the search group. So we start to study about the chapters of the book. So every week we start to study about the chapter one, two, and three, about the quadratic voting, about the VIP, about the data, and we start to discuss over about the ideas. Is it difficult to work in Brazil or not? So we did uh, academic research about everything about the especially the book. 
So weekly we discussed a lot and some students started to, to write papers and articles about if it was possible or not here about our reality here in Brazil. So it was the beginning uh, about the, the, the chapter. So we started to discuss more about this. That's really cool. And I, uh, yeah, I remember uh, you are also doing research uh, with your professor, Juliana. Juliana yes. Yeah, so She's... Uh, can you also briefly introduce, do you discuss like related research during uh, your meetings? Yes, because uh, Juliana Domingues, she's the, the leader of the, the chapter here in Brazil. So we, example, we start to study example, quadratic vote, how was possible to, to make our politics more perspective, uh, because uh, quadratic voting, it's a way of making our political decisions more democratic. And uh, we start to, to talk about what will, data because uh, there is a chapter about data and how it can be affordable and to protect data and uh, it, there is a lot of uh, uh, research about that every student they, they think a way of uh, to make it possible the ideas and uh, become true in reality so that was very useful research group okay that's uh that's really interesting to know and uh i will briefly talk about my chapter uh so uh we actually the first time uh, i organized the chapter is actually uh uh before uh sort of the before i invite uh, jack henderson to our campus uh we we did like brief discussions of the book and we also did the coast monopoly game and uh, and those things are sort of uh i think the game is really helpful for uh people to understand the concept and it's really fun to to play and uh and also you uh we encounter sort of uh uh like the the, the problem of like how to count all, all, all like all, all the chips when we play the game and uh, so we realize sort of maybe like a decentralized blockchain can be really helpful. So I think playing those games are, are really helpful to understand the concept. And, and also, uh, oh, uh, I, I talked about uh, uh, a lot of things related with uh, blockchain. For example, uh, I think Vitalik uh, has, a, a, has several blog posts related uh, with like a quadratic finance. And also uh, there are blog posts on the Radical Exchange uh, uh, website uh, about the relationship between uh, Radical Exchange and the blockchain. And, and I think uh, Vitalik also gave a really good speech uh, in last year's uh, uh, Radical Exchange conference in Detroit uh, about the relationship between Radical Exchange and blockchain. And I think if there, uh, if, if there are student chapters that have a lot of people interested in blockchain, um, I think it's really good to uh, to to show them uh, related uh, materials, and uh, um, and also we sort of also go over uh, some of the book chapters uh, like cost. And actually, uh, we have one student. He is really interested in the cost idea, and he's from Detroit. And he's I think he once reached out to like the Detroit government uh, about uh, proposals uh, like cost related with maybe the housing market uh, in Detroit. Um, and uh, we also have students interested in data as labor, like uh, we have a student uh, that is doing like a take five program. So that is like uh, uh, sort of doing another uh, year of coursework after he graduated as a senior. And he is actually uh, interested in the idea related with like a, jour a journalistic ethic and, uh, and re also related with how like those modern media platform like Facebook uh, take data from, from users. And uh, his Take 5 project actually uh, cited the radical market book, uh, the data as labor part. And uh, uh, he, yeah, he's, he's interested in like those data related themes that um, uh, 
that that applied uh, those in the uh, in his own project. So I think uh, sort of the way I organize my chapter, one of the principles I have is to connect uh, the student uh, the student's own specific interest, like his career interest or like his current just like academic or interest or like research interest. So different students have different interests. So so the like those blockchain people, they will just be interested in like the radical exchange ideas that are related with blockchain. And for me, uh, I'm more interested in like social science, uh, maybe also related with like international uh, relations. So I'm, I'm personally interested in applying potentially like quadratic finance um, potentially in the realm of international organization. Um, so I think, um, so what else my chapter? Oh, uh, yeah, so because I'm a PhD student of political science, I was really lucky uh, to have uh, Professor Alicia Holland from uh, the government department of Harvard because she was uh, gi giving a presentation in our graduate student research seminar. Uh, about like planning institutions and like property rights. And, uh, and I, I also reached out to her to give a talk about how to apply quadratic voting in survey research. Uh, and I think that is like a very fortunate experience. Um, so yeah, I think also if, if any professors uh, visiting or like on your campus that are have related research interest, I think that will also be uh, very helpful. So, um, yeah, so for uh, what to do specifically in the chapter meetings. So, Jake, uh, do you have, uh, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would just say, I think that, well, first of all, what you guys have accomplished um, in your respective chapters is pretty fantastic and something for us to emulate as we do start to do in person meetings, which like fingers crossed, we'll be able to do some in persons um, in the coming year. Um, but uh, some universities, including ours, haven't even said whether or not they're gonna do in-person classes, so we don't know. Um, but I mean, for us, the challenge has been, you know, especially for kids at Harris, but uh, I think this is true almost universally across UChicago, it's the challenge is always getting them to take the first step into understanding, like, what is this thing? Like, I've never heard of radical exchange before. You just said the words quadratic to describe elections and now I'm scared and I don't know what's happening. So, I mean, you know, there's lots of things about this, um, the branding of radical exchange that can be a little bit of a barrier to entry for certain people. So I think a lot of, you know, what I, I think about is how can we sort of lower that barrier to entry and make it so that this is something that's approachable, something that um, people can kind of get intuitively without having to like read, you know, an article, you know, I, I'm the, um, editor-in-chief of Chicago Policy Review. So I, all the time I think about like, how can we make these things, like any idea accessible to people. And I know from that experience that explaining radical exchange is a hard sell because it's extremely complicated. It's these economic ideas don't come natural. If they were easy, they would already have been implemented. Um, the fact that they're not implemented means that they're on an equilibrium that is inaccessible and therefore hard to understand. So I think that part of our job is creating that bridge to the current, from the current equilibrium to the one where we need to end up to ex embrace these ideas like quadratic voting, quadratic finance, all of these things. Um, you know, one thing that um, I've been talking about a lot with um, my co-founder, Gustavo Diaz, who's doing a fantastic job on the undergraduate side of university, he has brought up this idea of, well, maybe we can like partner with some of the great museums we have on campus where we can do sort of like a little, like a, almost a demo with quadratic finance where we're exposing students to these ideas in a setting that, you know, it's a, it's a museum, so it's a little bit approachable. They kind of know what that's about, but maybe we can build some sort of like quadratic finance element into, I don't know, maybe they're um, putting up a certain amount of money to um, fund the maintenance of certain paintings or just donating to the museum based on certain paintings they like. I mean, there's these sort of ideas that can drive the idea of quadratic finance home to people and what that is um, in a really approachable way. And that, that's what I'm most interested in looking at. Yeah, so talking about sort of introduce those ideas, I think uh, if you have a really good grasp of the, the philosophy of radical exchange or like the radical market book, uh, you can prepare some like a, a short and brief introduction. 
and uh, and uh, and I did that. And I also I think one another good way is like I actually there are some very good video clips, maybe both from like people like Vitalik or Glenn, uh, that are short. Uh, they, they talk about radical exchange, maybe ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, I think may, uh, you can also play those videos during your chapter meetings. I think uh, I picked like a one one of the video because Glenn did a lot of talks all over the world. Uh, I I picked one of his video. I think it's just about ten to fifteen minutes. He gave he gave like very short, uh, but like uh, I think also accessible introduction to the radical market book. Uh, I think these are, are really helpful. Like like just to to give you the idea of the philosophy, like breaking the left and the right to achieve like both the like kind of uh, uh, equal uh, redistribution and also efficient market, like things like that and mechanism design. Uh, I think those are are maybe helpful. And also- yeah. I'd like to see memes as well. I think memes are really good at explaining things on a really yeah. kind of level, you know, just instinctually they get it, you know? Yeah. Uh, so next, uh, ask me. So uh, do you have anything to add about sort of what do you plan to do in the uh, each chapter meeting? Yeah, so um, I don't have anything major to add, obviously, because um, like I said, we're at the early stages, so we haven't had any meetings yet. Um, but similar to what Jake was saying, like it's about kind of like getting people to like understand and engage with the movement as a whole. Um, so we do have like um, regular like seminar series in my school and um, like there've definitely been several speakers who have spoken on topics like related to radical exchange concepts and stuff um, but that generated like a lot of interest but it's about kind of building the link between these kind of things and the movement as a whole and getting people to kind of like understand um, the whole movement and how the concepts like draw together whereas it like it can be a bit seem a bit scary or overwhelming is like the big picture um, so yeah just kind of trying to get people in who can um, who can better explain the whole concept and how things fit together and people can see the things that they're already interested in and have already done work on kind of like within that. Yeah, I think uh, sort of to get the idea out is really important. Also maybe to work with like artists or like uh, people who can tell stories or I don't know. Um, yeah, I think art is a really important part of radical exchange as well. And there are, I think, uh, always like movie part of this conference. I remember last year, yeah, la there was a movie last year and this year also. Uh, and, and I think Glenn was talk talking with like the, the, the movie movie maker from uh, the, uh, Sri Lanka, right? So, and um, uh, yeah, to talk about how artists and political economists can work together. And uh, I think one year they also had the director of uh, Sorry to Bother You, right? That was a pretty interesting talk. Yeah. So I think, yeah, to, to work with like, uh, like artistic people is, is very important. Um, let's see if, if we have some questions here. Uh, if not, we can, um, uh, like questions related with student chapters. Uh, if not, we can just keep going. Um, so I I think another important question is, um, so how do you think the radical exchange ideas can help improve student and university life? And uh, also how the radical exchange foundation can help you uh, in terms of building your chapter? Um, and also, how do you plan to organize your chapter's future activities given COVID? Uh, so I will, I will just briefly talk about my experience. Um, yeah, I think uh, one thing is like, we, we think potentially is applicable is maybe something related with quadratic voting, maybe related with some student governance, but um, yeah, but I haven't really go very far. <laughs> on that front, we were kind of talking about it. Um, and also, 
uh, actually my chapter is working with the RIT effective altruism potentially to uh, implement a quadratic finance, but we were struggling with sort of the, the subsidy pool, like where to get a subsidy pool. I'm not sure if the Radical Exchange Foundation can provide like some kind of subsidy pool for like whatever radical, uh, quadratic finance implementations. And uh, uh, yeah, and actually the yeah, COVID sort of really disrupted uh, sort of the plan to implement that. But I think we still can have like meetings to talk about ideas on Zoom. And actually after the, after the COVID hit, we had a Zoom meeting talk about uh, like the identity part uh, intersectional social data um, uh, with some of the sort of blockchain oriented students of my chapter. So I, I still think uh, uh, if the st school cannot open, we can still have meetings to chat about ideas on Zoom. Um, okay, so yeah, so those questions, uh, so does anyone have, have anything just, you can just jump in related with uh, how radical exchange idea can help improve student life and how Radical Exchange Foundation can help and how, uh, how do you plan to organize given COVID? Yeah, so I mean, I would just say in terms of the support that Radical Exchange could give, I mean, there's, there's this awkward period uh, in the founding of a university organization where you're not officially recognized by the university yet. So, I mean, if they could, I don't know, um, give us resources for, I don't know, even just like enough money for like pizza or sandwiches um, so that we can do like a lunch talk. Um, I mean, that would be kind of cool assistance if that's possible. Yeah. Um, on, yeah, I think that we all like pizza. So that obviously that, nice. that has a lot of appeal. Um, but um, I mean, the other thing too is, you know, I think that um, as you're doing your activism within Radical Exchange, um, there's also an element of this that you have to integrate into you know, even more broadly into the way that you interact with the university community, um, the way that you think about yourself as a citizen on campus. Um, and one thing that I, I've started to do is um, think about ways that I can use my post where I am, um, you know, editor in chief of Chicago Policy Review, which is one of the, or it's the biggest um, Harris student group. Um, maybe there's ways where we can think about that in a radical way. Um, and one thing I'd like to share, if I can bring it up real quick, is um, this, um, piece of advertising that we put out, which is trying to bring people into what we're calling the Delta Project. And what the Delta Project is, is a summer series being piloted by the Chicago Policy Review that's all about the various changes that our society have been going up through for a long time. Um, or Well, not a long time, really just <laughs> since the beginning of the summer, right? Um, so we've had a pandemic, we've had protests, we've had recession. I mean, we've had all of these things that have fundamentally changed society and yet there's almost like a denial that we're going through this insane moment. And we put this out because we wanted to make students think about um, the fact that we're living through a really urgent moment in American history and in world history. Um, and what the idea of the summer series is, is let's let Paris students who are public policy students write about the radical changes that are happening in society. And um, you know, we're, we're just um, getting ready to close the application session for this Delta project for writers. And we've already had just a massive amount of interest. Um, and I think that the reason for that, you know, higher level of interest than we've had on other projects we've tried is that we're structuring it around these radical ideas about change and like, what are the changes that we need to implement to respond to, you know, all of these things, pandemic, protest, recession. So I think that's a really important side of the, um, the project that we're working on. It's something I'm really excited about. So I would just say, think, look, constantly be looking for ways um, that you can bring those sort of radical ideas into your, you know, your university life and into your everyday existence. Very important. Yeah, I think that is really cool. And uh, I, yes, and okay. I think I think it's good because even when you gather people with a lot of uh, different ideas and background, it's good. And I think the Radical Foundation can provide as a kind of a visibility to our projects local. So that's very important. So I think it's the good beginning to get, uh, gather a lot of people and the visibility that uh, Radical Foundation can give us. And even the partners, because we, it's, it's, it, the Radical Exchange is uh, it's huge now. And I think the partners, if they see the, our projects can really make it a change in the, our society and our own community, it will be very helpful. Mm -hmm. 
So ask me, do you have anything to add? Yeah. So, um, so for your first question, um, in terms of how concepts can be used on campus, I guess I guess I agree with what you're saying, Russell. Um, it would be very interesting to see um, how quadratic voting could be used, maybe. Um, I think that universities are a great place to kind of experiment with new ideas and test concepts. So it would be great to kind of like get more students involved in um, directing decisions on campus and using quadratic voting could work really well. Um, and in terms of what radical exchange could do to help, um, like from my point of view, um, it would just be great to have help in maybe organizing speakers from the movement who can help to inspire students further and better the understanding of the movement. Um, and perhaps also it would be great if they could um, act as sort of like a connecting point between different societies like in the UK and even worldwide um, so that maybe we can build like a bigger network together and like learn from each other and maybe even have like cross university discussions and stuff um, which I think could be really beneficial for everyone. Yes I really agree with that I think uh, just because we just briefly uh, talked to each other before like when we were preparing for this panel and I think uh, that is really not enough right so mm -hmm. we want to talk to each other maybe more so maybe uh, if in the future the Radical Exchange Foundation or like the, stu the student leaders in the community uh, can organize like more sort of course chapter, course university uh, platforms, I think that will be uh, really interesting. Um, I think we have a one minute. Uh, so do we have to end at 50 or we, because we start late, right? So um, let's see if there's any questions. Um, so there's an anonymous question. Would it be possible to know more about the place Southern countries could actually have in applying experimental research uh, with concepts like quadratic voting? Um, Actually, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I can give you a point, a final point. I think yeah. the better way you try to find a local chapter and try to see, example, if, if there is some research group, because he asking about the research. So example, here in Latin America, you can uh, enter on a website of Radical Exchange, find your local chapter and try to see, because sometimes, example, here in Brazil, we have many, uh, a lot of small groups Sometimes there is a group and you don't know about them. So try to find and try to look if there is some specific group in, uh, inside the university or any locale and you can find more information, especially about the academic one. Because here in Brazil, we have a special group at the University of Sao Paulo, but we have many groups about technology and it is about radical change as well. So try to find and search on our website about the local groups and maybe you can find a local community or a local group, a local research group, and it would be very useful if you want to know more information and how you get involved. Yeah. Uh, so do we have to end here? Or I think maybe we can also just talk about what is your future plan about uh, how how your career may be related with radical exchange ideas. I mean, for me, I, uh, in the near term, I, so I'll just try to do that in my research. So does anyone want to add about how your future career may be related? Sure. Yes. Um, okay, you, no problem, Nismi. Um, okay. yeah, so, um, in the future, I really want to be working on like planning for adapting infrastructures for climate and social, social sustainability goals such as the, the net zero targets we have for infrastructure here in the UK. Um, and I think that this is actually very connected with the radical exchange concepts because currently um, infrastructure decision-making is very disconnected from the people who actually regularly be using it. Um, and I'd like to see more participatory approaches coming through, um, especially since I believe that communities are best placed to know what kind of alternatives are gonna work best in their environments. So I think actually quadratic voting and quadratic finance could work really well um, in this sector, particularly in, in better representing like the wants and needs of society and um, giving voice where it's needed most for each decision that needs to be made. That's really cool. So does anyone have anything to add, Jake? 
Yeah, so I think that, um, you know, part of the appeal of radical exchange ideas is that they, I think as time goes on, we are going to see more and more of them come into play in society and come into existence in society, uh, you know, whether or not it's coming to society through something that's like branded as radical exchange, or whether it's something that people just sort of coalesce around because it's just fundamentally a good idea. I think we're going to see more and more of the ideas that we're talking about at this conference become commonplace. Um, for me, you know, where I come from that housing background, um, you know, I would love to see more, uh, more and better databases around land management and um, different ways of helping communities um, actually build housing that's inclusive to people. I think that's, you know, one of the biggest problems that we face uh, in, in our cities right now. And I hope that that like if if I could have my wish that any of these predictions come true, it would be the predictions around um, systems that help people build housing in our communities, because that's something that's broken in my hometown of Boston, but I, I think in cities across the United States. Really cool. So uh, Vinicius, do you have anything to add? Yes, uh, for me, my career is so important because I always worry about inequality. And for me, it means a lot, a project like ours, it's, it means a lot, and I'm sure that the Radical Exchange can provide uh, some basic stuff to, 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 to make it real. That's, that's it. And, uh, and uh, finally, I want to invite our students from Latin America. Okay. Okay. So I think that is... Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so it's really a great pleasure to talk with you. And uh, so I hope to see all of you maybe in the next year's conference. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and I hope uh, we can all do something related with the radical exchange ideas. Okay, Russell. So thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.